Hello and welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. If you're interested to know whether or not turning the case necks on our Hornady brass improved our load testing with the Nosler 130 grain RDF projectile, stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of the community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post new videos and you won't miss anything. I'll start this video by basically telling you guys if you haven't seen the previous load development video for this, you should probably start there. We're going to talk a little bit about it, but the basics are we really had a rough start when we've done our first load development with the 130 grain Nosler RDF projectile. Most of our groups were in the 3 MOA range and certainly nothing to brag home about. Standard deviations were next to horrible and was certainly a frustrating start to the series. As you can tell, Alliant Reloader 26 is on the table because that is exactly what we used. We talked a little bit more about that in the last video, but the short version is we're basically using some data we got from Berger's website for the 135 grain Classic Hunter projectile and applying it to a bullet of similar weight. So guys, basically get into it. What we did for today's video is we actually loaded the same identical load in 25 different cases. These, this brass is all from the same lot of Hornady brass. The first 25 cases we did in our last video were completely stock, annealed, full length resized, and the case miles were open with our expander mandrel, which is our standard reloading process. The other 25 cases we're going to be talking about in greater detail today went through the same identical process, except for we turned the case necks on those cases to see if that would actually improve the groups and the statistics on our load development. Full disclosure, these were all actually loaded at the same time, and this just happened to be the brass that I had ready when my 130 grain projectiles were delivered. So, this is what we did. I hadn't really planned it out this way, but it's just the way it happened. One could certainly argue that with the standard deviations and groups that we saw in last week's video, almost anything would be an improvement. But, you'd hope, if the neck turning these cases actually showed some improvement, we would see it here. So let's get straight into the load data. Like I mentioned, we're using Alliant Reloader 26. We started at 47.4 grains and went all the way up to 49.5 grains. The projectile we're using for test is the Nosler 130 grain RDF, part number 53505. The primer for today is a CCI number 250 large rifle magnum primer. And like I mentioned, the brass we're talking about is Hornady brass, was annealed, full length size, had the mouth expanded with, an ex with a neck turning expander mandrel, and was turned using our Hornady lock and load neck turn tool. If you guys would actually like to see the video where I turned those, I'll put a card up so you guys can go check that out as well, so you can get into as much detail on this particular load development as you'd like. So the cartridge overall length was 2.840 inches. Our cartridge base to ogive measurement was actually 2.185 inches. The estimated velocities for today's video were actually based on the velocity curves we generated with Alliant Reloader 26 and the 130 grain ELD match projectile by Hornady. I'll throw that graph up real quick so you can see it. I actually did a video where we're talking about how we generated this, but this is where we picked our loads. So guys, let's just get into the data that we generated today. At 47.4 grains, our estimated velocity was 2880. Our actual velocity was 2844. Our standard deviation was 26.5. Our extreme spread was 70. And our group size was 1.42 MOA. At 47.9 grains, our estimated velocity went to 2950. Our actual velocity was 2864. Standard deviation of 23.1, extreme spread of 61, and a group size of 1.213 MOA. At 48.5 grains, our estimated velocity was 29.80. Our actual velocity was 29.16. Standard deviation of 22.4, an extreme spread of 46, and a 1.989 MOA group. At 49.2 grains, our estimated velocity was 30.15. Our actual velocity was 29.74. Standard deviation of 16.8, extreme spread of 57, and a 1.104 MOA group. At our max charge of 49.5 grains, our estimated velocity was 30.50. Our actual average velocity was 30.11. Standard deviation of 12.3, extreme spread of 30, and a group of 2.506 MOA. Now guys, if you hadn't seen last week's video, you'd think, how could this possibly be an improvement? However, the groups and statistics were so bad from last week's video, let's talk about it a little bit. Starting off talking about the velocities, though there is a slightly different average velocity from the two groups, I'm really not sure that that is much of a factor. Talking about the average velocity a little bit, I'm really not sure there's anything statistically differently noticeable about the neck tension on these two specific loads. If anything, you would think the neck turn brass would have the slightly lower neck tension, which actually would have lowered the velocity a little bit, at least from the experience that I have had. 
However, I'm really not sure that these values are statistically different and any trends can necessarily be established. The average velocity on the max load was, was actually only one feet per second off and the 47.9 grain load was actually within two feet per second. I really don't think there's anything significantly different. Talking about the standard deviations, though they're not good, certainly what a change. Three of our standard deviations from our first group were actually in the 30s, and our worst standard deviation on this group was 26.5. Though the extreme spread was only slightly better, the standard deviation was quite better. In fact, let me put just a little chart up on the screen so you guys can see the actual difference from the stock brass from the neck turn load. There really is quite a difference. Though my biggest surprise of all was actually the groups. Though certainly not to brag about, our smallest group being only 1.1 MOA, that is significantly better than the 3 to 3.3 MOA groups that we were getting through the first four charges. Though our max charge group was not significantly better, it was very interesting to me that the group shrunk by such a drastic rate. In fact, put on screen you can actually see how significantly our groups actually dropped. And in my book, guys, that's very impressive. I really don't want to give you guys the wrong impression. I really don't think we ended up with a good load at the end of the day. However, I do think it was pretty amazing how much the group shrunk simply by turning these case necks. I honestly did not expect to see such a significant difference. Now in this particular case, I don't think it's going to make a bad load turn good, but I certainly am more interested now on knowing a load that I have shot that's pretty good to see if it can do even better. Overall, the statistics seem to improve fairly significantly. In most of the cases, cutting the group size in almost half, I'm pretty sure that would certainly brighten almost anyone's day. So guys, we'll probably end up picking a different powder if we go on with this load. Honestly, the next time that I shoot this brass, I'm not sure if it'll be with the same projectile. Maybe we'll actually take a quick look and see if we can take one of our other load workups that did pretty good and do a comparison to see if it actually does any better in our neck turn brass. Not saying we can make any direct conclusions, but certainly our first try doing this case neck turning certainly looks positive to me. So guys, I'd really love to hear from you guys in the comments section below. Do you guys actually turn your case necks? What kind of results do you guys see before and after your case neck turning? I did run into an article on Precision Rifle Blog. If you're unfamiliar with them, they frequently do surveys of the top 100 shooters in the PRS. And probably not a big shocker to anyone that's watching this channel, but 90% of the top 100 actually reload their own brass. Of those, when they talk about what some people think of as optional steps in their brass preparation, actually 65% of all of those people anneal, and 53% of them actually turn their case necks. So, while both sets of brass in this particular case were annealed, I almost wonder if the biggest improvement that we actually got from this was actually turning the case necks. Now, I'm fully aware Hornady brass is probably not the most consistent brass that we could buy, and I think that's another reason why some people tend to go to other brands like Lapua, Norma, and Nosler. However, I know there's a few of us that still have some Hornady brass laying around, and if you've thought about turning your case next, maybe this will give you some motivation to do it, or who knows, maybe not. Love to know your thoughts in the comments section below. Like I mentioned, guys, if you guys are doing this already, I'd really be interested to know what type of improvements have you seen in your load development with this. Have you done case neck turning, not really saw anything, and decided to give it up? I did really think it was interesting. I hope you enjoyed today's video and found it very informative. If you have any comments or questions on the video, please put those in the comments section below. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button. And like always, until next week, stay safe in small groups.